Hello and good morning, everybody. Welcome to another StarCraft U broadcast here on my channel. My name is Anaris, and today we're actually going to be taking a look at a series of games from the replay pack that came from the FX Invitational. This is going to be from Playday number one. We're going to start off this morning with a match featuring E.G. Idra, spawning as the green Zerg, I think it's green, it looks green to me, up in the 12 o'clock position against his red Terran opponent, FXO Filthy. So is ZVT here today on MLG Metalopolis. And this is looking to be a pretty darn fun match. Looking forward to seeing uh, what Idra brings to the table. Always a very colorful player, to say the least. And, you know, Filthy, I actually haven't seen him play before, so this will be a first time for me. And I'm glad I'm here sharing it with you guys. We're going to be popping our Filthy... Uh, I'm not even going to finish that sentence. Popping our Marion Belly Freezer Jam, which is something that I happen... Why do I have this on my... De what the heck? Why do I... Oh, jeez. All right, well... As the cheat would say, exactly, folks. So, all right, here we go with Filthy dropping his buildings down here at the base of the ramp. This does prevent or present some interesting strategic opportunities for him, not the least of which is a pretty darn nice wall off. You can see it actually connects the minerals right there. I think there's a little bit of an area they can run by. That's going to be about it. Now, up here for Idra, we see he's currently progressed. It's about as far as you would expect him to be. You see he's sitting at 15 supply, sending out that first run. Of course, the Terran player doesn't have any SCV or anything up here to scout it out choosing instead to focus on his economy. There goes the SCV right there. Looks like it's going to be heading to scout right as we just mentioned it. Heading actually a little, a little bit of a uh, different direction there. Usually you'll have the players decide to scout, say if they're in the position in the 6 o'clock, they'll head over to the uh, 2 or 3. But hey, not that big of a deal though. So how was your April Fool's Day? I actually, I, I say this, knock on wood, I didn't have anything happen to me, so I'm hoping that by saying that, like, I'm not going to get bombarded with stuff next year. But uh, I did see a couple couple interesting Blizzard thing. There was some WoW things. There was some StarCraft II stuff as well. So all of it was pretty darn interesting. I have to say I got a few laughs out of that. So let me know in the comment section down below if anybody had any crazy shenanigans that happened to them yesterday on April Fool's Day. I think I'm actually going to be able to get this uploaded today. I hope so. If not, I'm going to say yesterday and you guys will be like, Oh, Naris, yesterday was Saturday. And I'm just going to be a retard. So now we're seeing Idra going ahead and dropping the gas. You can see it's obviously not meant to get that speedling upgrade right off the bat. He could be deciding to go ahead and save that gas for something a little different. You know, say roaches, although we don't see a roach worn down going down just yet. Probably wouldn't, though. As it would, the timing would not be quite correct. He's probably still going to focus on, you see he's getting a couple Zerglings. That's obviously to drive away any further scouting. He's also droning up, got a couple Queens coming down the line. So there's a lot of stuff that he's actually going to be dumping his money into. It looks like the Zerglings are actually trying to jump into the pool there. Super cool story, bro. All right, down here, let's take a look at Filthy, see exactly what he is doing. He's taking this time to expand, which I do like. You know, he realizes, okay, Idra's up there doing that expansion. He dropped that first. He's not going to be a massive threat. And so you see the Terran player actually having built his uh, one refinery here. That's pretty standard. He is building Reapers. He's actually got a Marauder on the way, too. It's kind of an interesting choice. Although, not surprising. A lot of times what you'll see Terran players do, they'll see those Zerglings. They'll think, all right, so got to get a Marine or two off the bat, get a Bunker as well. But considering the timing of the gas indicates we're not going to see any very early speedling play. So, actually got that Reaper just coming up there scouting. Not a lot was actually done with it. You see, got one kill. That's about it. I think it was actually just one Zergling there. We can actually look at the units lost. No, actually got a drone. So, anyways, you see he's got two of them now. You know, they're great for early map control for the Terran player. Also good at killing Zerglings. The Marauder, it's a good choice when you're dealing with things like Roaches. You know, it's a... You pretty much can't go wrong when getting uh, getting that early Marauder when you find that the Zerg player's gas is timed as it was. So now we see he does have the speedling upgrade on the way. We've got that second gas coming down the line as well as a third one. So pretty standard on that for Idra. We're seeing actually pretty much just classic Idra build here. Getting his uh, macro going, you know, getting his tech economizing, pretty much doing the thing that Idra does. And down here, we actually see there's a barracks being constructed just outside of Idra's base. This is most likely going to be for scouting. Oh, will this Reaper go down so very close? Nice cliff jump. Able to avoid death at the very last moment there. Oh, but there's that speedling upgrade. Will he actually make it? All oh, those Zerglings are going in for the kill. And Bunker, save! Very nice save at the last second there. As Filthy is looking to be going with a uh, relatively heavy mech build. Ooh, that's always fun to watch. 
you know, get some get some uh, Hellions up there, roasting a ton of those Zerglings, get some Siege Tanks, knock out those uh, far away units. All in all, pretty good stuff, especially against the uh, the Mutus. Now, the Infestor has had some pretty interesting changes in patch 1.3, with Fungal Growth receiving a, uh, well, I, I'd, I'd call it a buff, because it's it's just really interesting to watch that. You know, it does the extra damage against the armored units. It's got the reduced time. I think it's 36 damage over, like, two seconds or something like that. So, very interesting to watch that. I actually cast a game. I think it was Trans SG versus Cabin, where we saw some great Infestor play. Uh, dropping the Infestors, taking out the Mineral Line just super fast. And... Like I said, I'm probably retarded. I think it's either four seconds or two seconds. Actually, I haven't had that much of an opportunity to experiment with it in the past week or so. I've been very busy. For those of you who don't know, I'm actually pursuing a computer science degree, and I've been super busy in the past week or so trying to get my last two classes set up and ready to go do that. I've just got a little internship thing i got to do. And uh, for the most part, I'm very happy to be done with it. It's certainly been fun. But in the meantime... We see FXO Filthy still scouting out with that barracks. He's actually constructing another one here, as we do have Hellions just roasting and toasting tons of Zerglings there. Look at that, folks. We do have one Helly with one kill, another one with zero. Let's see, we got one and five. So that five one definitely the hero, Hellion, as FXO Filthy is deciding, deciding to send another barracks scout. So he's going to have two of them here. He's going to see all kinds of information. Look at that. Is he actually going to spot the Spire? Yes, he definitely will. He sees that sure enough. Actually, he's watching him come over here. You can see what all he's seen so far. He's seen the Roach Warren and everything. So, SCV ready. All right. Got more Hellion harassment coming over here to Idra's new expansion. There are a couple Roaches there. So, they should be able to actually handle that, especially once they go on the creep. Speaking of creep, I do like how Idra has decided to use his overlord, spread the creep there. That's going to afford him a lot more mobility. And also, it's going to help with the creep expansion there. Oh, there comes two overseers going to be sacrificed into three overseers into the Terran base, where he will see one armory, one engineering bay, and a Thor. Nice, uh, nice contaminate right there. You can see that just landed on the factory. Unfortunately, nothing was actually constructing in that factory, but... All in all, not uh, not that big of an issue here. Is the overseers are actually just taking all these hits, man? This Thor is like, God, I wish something would just die. Not gonna happen though. You see, actually, Idris was able to get that thing to relative safety. Finally, that contaminate came off. That was that disgusting noise that we just heard a moment ago. Once again, we do have Filthy just hanging out with the barracks, chilling like nothing's going on whatsoever. Oh, but will he see the mutas? Oh, so very close, but he does not. Having this information would actually give him, uh, well, a pretty good lead on what could be happening here in the next couple minutes. Looks like Idra is actually going to be moving out with these mutas, may decide to do some kind of harassment on the Terran base. Now, let's look at that for just a second here. Of course, with the Thors, they're able to hand handle the mutas very well, especially if they get bunched up accidentally for a second or two there. But now we see one Thor is already here. Several missile turrets are guarding the mineral line. And note that Idra is also expanding once again. He's actually... That's pretty darn a uh, pretty darn quick expanding there, but certainly what we have come to expect, and yes, indeed, it will be a fun game, Idra, as it looks like we're going to have Zerg continue just to stay in his base, build up. This is actually not what you want to do against Idra. I mean, I realize having never played against him myself, I, I can't speak from first-hand experience, but you think about it, a Zerg player that really likes to macro level, likes to go with the heavy economy, and then just, you know, have solid map control about mid to late game, you don't want to let him do that. We see most of uh, most of the losses that are actually displayed on the internet against Idra are games that are over very quickly before Idra has really had a full chance to establish himself, his base, etc. So, of course, there are exceptions to that, but those are a lot of the games that we have actually seen him play because those are the pe those are the replays that other people will release. Now, we do see the Mutas actually coming over here. He will lose three Hellions, but he's going to get that information. All right, so I'm not going to be able to do any more harassment because those Mutas are still in the field. I may have to continue to build a, maybe another turret or two in the base. It all depends. You see he is constructing two, one, two turrets right here, which I think are actually, yeah, right there in the mineral line. So now he's got the Thor, which keep in mind, these are not the Collector's Edition Thors, which I am sorely disappointed in. That was definitely worth the extra money there for the Thor skin alone. Now, taking a look at the production tab, you can see there's just a whole ton of stuff coming down the line. But look at the supply the supply count discrepancy here. Oh, he was actually just going to try to come in and do some damage, but not going to happen. This uh, refinery, it's kind of vulnerable. That's about it, and that's not even going to be vulnerable for that much longer because of the Thor's presence. 
So 157 to 127 right now. Looking at the income, you can see both players are over 2,000. We actually haven't had a lot of harassment this game. We've had a couple attempts from the Terran player. We've had Jury come down with the, uh, with the, I can't talk for a second there, with the Mutalisks, not really able to accomplish a whole lot. We see he's going to be actually coming down here. Once again, he's really going to want to close the gap. He's going to want to hurt the Terran where uh, where it counts right now, which you see he's going for a gas-heavy build. Look at all the factories he's got. So he's going to be looking to produce a lot of mechanized units. That's going to be Siege Tanks and Thors, both of which are very, very expensive on the end of the gas. Now we see right here, Idra has actually positioned his Mutas just west of the Terran main base. Wow, we do have a couple of Hellions coming over here, maybe trying to do some damage. I don't think this is going to be super successful. We see he's actually able to nail two drones right there. Roach is able to come and finish that off. Now there are the Mutas coming over for Midra, trying to indeed take out that refinery. Like I said earlier, this is an attempt to cut down on the gas income. Not to mention, this is really only one of the few vulnerable spots for Filthy right now. Like I said, and in terms of air, he could maybe hit this, but this turn right here, plus you've got the Thors, which are responding pretty darn quick. Looking down here, you can see he's doubled up on a couple turrets here. Pretty good positioning on that. The, the meter harassment really wouldn't be super effective right here. But let's look at the army composition right now for the Zerg player. We can see he's got the Mutas, he's got the Roaches, he's also got seven Infestors. Now this is a great idea against what the Terran player has. You saw he did research the Neural Parasite ability. So... There, you'll notice a lack of siege tanks, and there's also no ghosts for EMP. So those infestors are going to be able to do their job without fear of direct counter. Now we see the Zerglings actually deciding to chase head and going first, and oh wow, look at all the Neural Parasite landing right there at the top of the ramp. The infestors are nice and safely away from the, the fight. So many Thors have been mind controlled. Look at all that damage done to the Terran army. Meanwhile, 27 additional roaches are being made at this point, now up to 32. So you see Idra is established, he is ready to go, even more roaches on the way. Terran looks like he's actually going to be going for a counterattack, but at this point, to what effect? You look at the Zerg's production capability alone, and you gotta think, with the income that he's got, 2700 per minute, you know, he can just fill that up super quick. 200 or 200 supply right now. Looking at the units all, so you can see Zerg definitely suffered the greater of the two. But look what he can replenish, man. This is just going to be insane. There's more mind controls landing on the Thors. You can see they are super low. Combined with the Roach's firepower, it's just not even going to be a contest. Thors are indeed going down. Last one. Neural Parasite is over, and Filthy is going to be in a bit of predicament here, folks. You see, all he's got right now is, well, Squat. Oh, man. Well, that was a pretty interesting game indeed. I'm going to have to say, I think it's about over here looking. Again, you look at the units tab. Two Thors, one Reaper, one Marine against this. No, it's just not going to happen. Well, He's even got a Greater Spire coming. So if this doesn't work, then you've always got the Brood Lords to finish it off. Sure enough, Roaches are going to be coming in here, taking out the factories. And overall, you know, very well played by Filthy and Ezra. But Filthy just does not have a way to counteract the Infestors and the Roaches, they just did their job. Idra had a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of good little harassment techniques with those Mutas, but in the end, Filthy just succumbed to the massive amount of firepower from his own units. Let's go on to game number two and see what happens next.